On the 21st of July 2024, a young footballer called Endrick, who plays for the Brazilian team Palmeiras, will turn 18 years old. When this happens, it will trigger a transfer that will see the youngster join Real Madrid. Now, none of this seems particularly unusual, but there are some curiosities here. At the point in time at which Real Madrid decided to sign Endrick from Palmeiras, he was only 16, with just over 200 minutes of senior football to his name. And on top of this, the fee for the transfer is believed to be in the region of around 60 million euros. Now, paying more money on a 16-year-old with barely any senior experience than you might expect to pay for most professional footballers at the peak of their powers seems like a high-risk strategy. But it's an approach that Madrid have used for a number of years now. So, why might one of the biggest clubs in the world take this approach to youth development? And more importantly, does it work? The watershed moment in Real Madrid's policy of spending big on youth is generally dated back to the signing of Martin Erdegaard, the Norwegian youngster who signed for the club at the age of 16 for a fee believed to be in the region of 4 million euros. Small change in comparison to the sorts of fees that are being handed out now. Erdegaard's time at Real Madrid was largely underwhelming. Although he became the youngest debutant in the club's history at 16 years and 157 days old, he spent most of his time with Los Blancos, either injured or out on loan, before moving to Arsenal in a deal worth 35 million euros with potential add-ons. What was not underwhelming about Erdogan's time at Real Madrid was the bottom line. Having amortised the original 4 million euros over the original three years of an eventual six-year contract, the final fee from Arsenal was booked as pure profit. Not bad for a player who made only 11 senior appearances across five seasons. So with this kind of return on investment, it wasn't a surprise to see a number of youngsters arriving for fees at the Bernabeu. And those fees just kept increasing. In 2017, Real Madrid met Teo Hernandez's 24 million euro buyout clause to bring him in across the city from Atletico. His time at Real Madrid was also underwhelming. The French international picked up more loan appearances for Real Sociedad in his time than senior appearances for Real's first team. But even despite the large fee paid out for Teo, with amortization taken into account, the club will have booked a small profit when they sold him to AC Milan for 20 million euros after two years. Teo was 19 years old when he signed in 2017, but that same year, Real would take their first real financial risk for an under 18 year old. In May, they agreed a reported fee of 46 million euros to bring 17-year-old Vinicius Jr. from Flamengo to Spain. At the time, this was the second most expensive sale of a Brazilian player in the history of football. It was also the largest amount received by a Brazilian club for a transfer and the highest amount ever paid by a club for a footballer under the age of 19. Unsurprisingly, the weight of expectation rested heavy on Vinicius Jr.'s shoulders. With that amount of outlay on a youngster, results were expected immediately. And yet it wasn't until the 21-22 season that he really made his breakthrough into the senior team. Vinicius ended the season as the second highest scorer for Real, with 22 goals in all competitions, only lagging behind his teammate and future Ballon d'Or winner Karim Benzema. So those 46 million euros are starting to look very well spent. The arrival of Endrick then at Real Madrid is just the next in a long line of high fee, high potential signings made by the club going back half a decade. But the year that Vinicius Jr. signed stands out as the real watershed moment because in 2017, two high profile transfers took place. In the first place, Neymar moved from Barcelona to PSG for a record 222 million euros. The transfer market would never be the same again. But Neymar wasn't the only arrival in Paris that year. 18-year-old Kylian Mbappe joined PSG on loan with an option to buy clause valued at an eye-watering 180 million euros. Although they tried to bring Mbappe to the Bernabeu, Real Madrid couldn't compete. They had to change their strategy. And if they couldn't compete with developed players, their best bet was to buy the players before they had developed. This, of course, involved financial risk. But it was a financial risk that the club was seeing covered by the very players they were signing. The reality was that even with the underwhelming signings barely covering their own costs or incurring small losses, these success stories were more than compensating for them. This summer, Matt Wiltser, the managing editor of the fan outlet Managing Madrid, calculated that the 22 players under the age of 23 that Real Madrid signed since they signed Martin Erdogan 
came at a combined cost of 460 million euros. But of those players signed who have subsequently moved on, Wiltser estimates that, taking into account amortization, the club have made profits of around 189% on their initial outlay. So from a financial perspective, it's clear how this approach to youth development is working. But of course, Real Madrid are less concerned about the financial underlying than they are about the players that they are bringing through, being of a top level to keep them competing at the very top of the European game. Those fears are easily allayed with a quick scan through the Real squad. Eduardo Camavinga, Federico Valverde, Aurelian Chouameni, Vinicius Jr, Rodrigo. All of these players were signed young and have all made their way into the senior squad. It's too early to say, of course, if Endrick will join them. But if history has taught us anything, it wouldn't be a huge surprise. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.